Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be talking about Saracenia dormancy. It's a common misconception that these incredible carnivorous plants are exotic tropical plants that grow in jungles. This actually couldn't be any further from the truth. They're actually temperate plants that go into dormant period from fall and into spring. They're commonly found in North America, hence their nickname, American Pitcher Plants. Definitely make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm actually going to cut open a couple of these pitchers so you can see what the bug matter inside the pictures looks like. It's pretty cool. Today we're going to be going over Saracenia dormancy. It's often hard to cover dormancy for carnivorous plants perfectly due to everyone living in different plant hardiness zones. I personally live in a 6B, which is where I have the most experience, but I'm sure most of you watching this are in different zones than I am. I'll definitely do my best to cover the different conditions and try to provide a broad enough information to cover a spectrum of different hardiness zones. The plants that I'm showing you today have already started dormancy for actually about a month now. I've been kind of slacking on getting them trimmed back, which is why they already look like they're kind of in rough shape. They're even starting to develop some mold on the pitchers, which is one of the reasons I like to trim these back. To start, let's just go over a quick overview of Saracenia dormancy. Saracenia start dormancy in the fall and will typically stay dormant for about three to four months. During this time, growth slows way down or even stops in some climates. This is due to two main factors, a reduced photo period and reduced temperatures. It's actually debated quite a bit in the community which one is a bigger factor, but it seems that most experts believe that light is the main factor. However, it's rather conclusive that both temperatures and reduced photo periods both play an important role in Saracenia's beginning their dormancy and staying in the dormancy. To prepare for dormancy, I like to trim away most of the existing growth, if not all of it. It's really hard to trim pitchers when they're still beautiful, but it can be much easier to cover the plants and to keep them insulated if you don't have the long pitchers in your way. I like to leave about an inch of the pitcher on the plant if it's still alive. If the pitcher is completely dead, I pull it off as close to the rhizome as I can. These aren't helping the plant in any way. This will also help give new pitchers that pop up in the spring more room to grow. It's a bit of a debate on when it's better to trim the pitchers going into dormancy or when they're coming out of dormancy in the spring. Personally, I've noticed a lot of mold and mildew that grow on the pitchers when kept in dark and cool places, especially if there's a lot of dead insect matter inside the pitcher. I like to avoid the mold and mildew by just getting rid of the old pitchers going into the dormancy period. If you're finding this video useful, please make sure to pour some water on the like button and subscribe to help my channel grow. It's my dream to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and you being here, liking, subscribing, commenting, and even watching the video all the way to the end helps my channel so much. So thank you so much and I appreciate you. I'm going to be talking about temperature here for just a little bit, so please keep in mind that I'll only be referencing temperatures in Fahrenheit. This is to help keep it simple. If you need to convert the temperatures, you can do a quick Google search to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. My loose guidelines are typically this for Saracenia dormancy. Try to keep your Saracenia in temperatures between 30 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. There's definitely some wiggle room here. If your temperatures are between 40 and 60 degrees, you will probably be okay just leaving them outside in the elements. However, if your winter temperatures often drop below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll want to make sure and prepare your plants for going below freezing temperatures. Real quick, before we start talking about how to overwinter and prepare your Saracenia for dormancy, I want to show you how you can get your hands on your very own Saracenia. California carnivores always have such an amazing selection of American pitcher plants. Check this out. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They are one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. You can use pine needles, mulch, or even snow to help insulate your plants if you must leave them out in the cold elements all winter. This part of the plant right here is the rhizome, and it's most important to keep from freezing too often. This isn't to say that you can't keep your plants in freezing temperatures, they just need a little insulation to keep the rhizome from freezing over. If your temperatures often go below 30 degrees, it's a good idea to have your pitcher plants in bigger planters. If you know your area gets pretty cold in the winter, and your plant is going to be kept in the elements, it might be a good idea to repot them early in the dormant period during the fall, before the temperatures get too low. If you do this, make sure to repot them in a larger planter. 
the more substrate your plant is surrounded by, the more insulated it'll be in the colder, harsher elements. If your plants are like mine and have smaller planters, it's important to protect them if temps will be below freezing often. If possible, I strongly recommend getting them out of the elements in either an unheated room in your home or even a garage or shed. These will typically be a few degrees warmer than outside, but also protects your plants from the elements. Saracenia are actually pretty cold hardy and can withstand some pretty cold temps, but the rhizomes of your plant shouldn't be exposed to freezing conditions for too many days in a row. If you experience temperatures below 30 degrees often, you'll need to make sure to overwinter your plants and to protect the rhizome. I've kept mine in a tent in my garage. I have a heater that clicks on whenever temps go below 30 degrees to at least keep the temperatures above freezing at all times. Under these conditions, it's okay for my rhizomes to be a little more exposed in the smaller planters. If you do not have a way to heat, you will need to make sure to protect the rhizome. Once temperatures go below 30 degrees, no light is really needed. You can actually completely cover these plants to help them with insulation. I used to put mine in a bucket and cover with some mulch, and then I'd wrap the bucket up in a blanket, just to make sure that the heart of the plant stays above. You can see in my example here, I actually don't have any mulch on hand to show you, so I wasn't able to do that part, but I would fill this pot with mulch all the way to the top, and then wrap it up in a towel or blanket just like I'm showing you here, if your planter is bigger, you might need a bigger bucket to put it in and maybe even a bigger towel or blanket to wrap it up in. After you get it all wrapped up, go ahead and store it in an unheated garage or shed. This should help keep it warm and insulated enough even in the really cold below freezing temperatures. If you have heavy snowfall, you can even pile the snow on top of your plants. Just make sure that if the snow melts, you have a backup plan to insulate once the snow is gone. Once the snow is gone, they're completely exposed to the elements and they could freeze and possibly die. In the snow example here, I'd recommend finding a place in a corner between some stuff. This just kind of helps keep it out of the elements. Bury it with the snow, you can go as deep as you want. The more snow you add, the more likely that it'll stay while you're waiting for the next snowstorm. You can keep adding snow onto the pile throughout the winter to make sure that they stay good and insulated underneath. People often ask about watering during dormancy. What most people don't realize is just how much water the soil retains when temperatures are cold. Usually during dormancy, I water mine for a total of three to four times throughout the entire period. If you have to cover and overwinter your plants, it's hard to keep them in a tray of water. I would uncover every three weeks or so, feel the soil. If moisture levels are still high, cover back up and let it be. Keep checking. If the soil starts to feel a bit dry on top, go ahead and top water. Once it's good and watered again, wrap it back up. They don't need to be sitting in a tray of water all winter like they do in the growing season. As long as the soil stays wet, they will be fine. I just saw someone that left their pitcher plant outside in a bucket. This bucket filled with water and their Saracenia had been sitting in water for months as the temperatures drop. The plant is completely rotted and well beyond saving. When the temperatures reduce and it starts to get cold, reducing the amount of water that you give your plant is absolutely necessary. If you live in an area that remains high temperatures year round, you may need to adopt the refrigerator method. For this, I recommend removing the soil, cleaning as much of the dirt off the rhizome and roots as possible. You can then wrap the roots in some wet, long fibrous sphagnum moss and put it in a Ziploc bag. Put it in the fridge and keep it in there during the winter dormant period. I would check on it every couple of weeks to make sure it's not collecting any mold or mildew. Do your best to remove any mold and put it back in the fridge and let it stay for the three to four months. One of the best tips that I can give about any kind of plant dormancy is to join a group specific to your area or zone. I know this isn't always possible, but look for a Facebook or Instagram group to see if you can find a group of people who grow Saracenia in the same zone as you. Find out what they're doing specifically that works. No one is going to be better suited to give you sound dormancy advice than the people who have been putting their plants through dormancy in similar conditions as you. Now, let's cut open some pictures. Not much to say here, just check out some unfiltered carnivorous plant goodness. I guess you can call this carnivorous plant poop? Enjoy! If you have any questions, throw them in the comments, I'd be happy to try to answer. Check out the video popping up on the screen right now. It's all about Saracenia care. This video is a Saracenia purpurea, but most Saracenia care is really similar. Make sure to pour some water on the like button and subscribe to help my channel grow. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!